You should be talking about Pauline Boaty when you talk about Popper. She should always be in the same sentence as Warhol, Blake. You know, she is an absolute innovator. She was beautiful, she was clever, she was talented. You know, she had a lot going for her. She was such an incredibly lively, life-affirming figure. She was kind of delving into life without any fear. She was wild, exuberant, bohemian, outspoken. Um, she was also genuinely intellectual. She was a complete package. There wasn't any women who were doing the fun stuff that she was doing. You got serious women artists like Louise Bourgeois and, and it was all a bit deadly earnest and she was having fun like the rest of the pop artists. We were very close friends and we were in a film together that Ken Russell made and I was in love with her, deeply in love with her. What's that? That's crazy. That's just a, an occasional spaceship flying through the sky, you know. You get them every now and again. She, you know, wasn't content just to do painting and stained glass. She, she she acted, she wrote, she discussed. She just, she just, I don't know, she's a star. On the board ship, lollipop, it's a night trip. Into bed you hop and dream away. On the good ship, lollipop. She was kind of overtly sexy and sexual and she would have images of bums and maybe less conspicuous female parts suggested. It was quite a feminist thing to do. I'm through with love, I'll never fall again. She introduces sexism and feminism into paintings. That's why I wanted to see them so much. I was like, this is a person I wish I knew. This is a person I wish I could go down the pub with. She was in her time fighting for the future so consciously aware of women's place in culture and society. Pauline Boaty was way ahead of her times in her grasp of feminist politics, a, a gendered critique of the world in which she lived. She became a kind of feminist symbol, an icon. Pauline was pointing out men's and women's sexuality. She obviously had the ability to produce art that would be much safer and more saleable less political, less confrontational, but you know, she was clearly producing art that really mattered to her in terms of what she wanted to say. She offers an interesting counterpoint to the sort of male view of, of pop art and what, what art should be about. What's that? That's the finger pointing at you. The bomb. That's Man. Beethoven's pen. And there's Franklin D. Roosevelt growing older. They're badges, actually. They mm. were. Like the fact that you've got someone in the 60s who knew the Rolling Stones, who knew Bob Dylan, like a fundamentally cool person who is also political and willing to speak up. It's just totally, unbelievably rare. She and her work all had so many of the best characteristics of the 1960s. So fun, political, colourful, original, thoughtful, and unfortunately short-lived as well. Down the valley on the horses they thundered, five, four, three, two, one. Ah, oh, but was it them who really thundered? Five, four, three, two, one. Uh-huh, it was the man friends. She was kind of all the cool things about the 60s that you could never quite catch hold of. She was just there for that brief minute. I was having a beautiful little life and I couldn't see it. There was this manageress of a dry cleaner. She's film snogging Michael Caine in Alfie. And then by the end of that year, she was dead. The announcement that she died was, was a really big shock.
she may be dead, but the art is still alive and doing what all good art does, make us think about the world both then and now. Five, four, three, two, one. Come on, everybody, let's twist. Hey, hey, come on, everybody, let's twist. Well, hey, well, hey, well, hey, everybody, on, everybody, everybody, hey, everybody's hey, doing on, the twist. Everybody. Yeah, it goes like hey, this, where hey, you shake on, that everybody. thing. Big town hey, hey, where everybody, on, everybody, everybody, everybody comes around hey, hey, and they jam the 